I'm still feeling a lot of uh, a lot of spirits emotions about this discussion about fear and and how much of a large influence they're having. So during the afternoon we may get a chance to talk to some of these spirits and hopefully hope those of you don't mind watching on on that discussion if we get the opportunity and uh, and then what we'll, we'll be able to do hopefully is feel a bit more positive about dealing with our fears rather than feeling so negative about them. Um, could someone handle the roving microphone? One, one's already on this side so I need someone on this side. Thanks Lenny. Awesome. It's on. Um, is there any questions, firstly, that you'd like to ask about what we've presented so far? Um, hi, AJ. How are you? Um, you were talking about the fears coming up in our body, mm -hmm. and I, I saw you last weekend, and you said you were going to talk about fears and. Um, Physi like, is it, does it come up physically as well? Because I got, the, like, the next day, I had this um, covered in heat rash. Yep. All over my face and my neck. Yep. And then I, I laid in bed and I thought, oh, I've got to process this, whatever. Yep. And then the next two days, or the day and a half after that, I got absolutely bitten alive on the legs. Yep. yep. With extreme pain. And I couldn't sleep last night. Would that be the same? Well, rashes and bites are the result generally of suppressed anger rather than suppressed fear. But remember from our discussion, we can see that the anger is suppressing the fear, which is suppressing the grief. So, so the key is to look at uh, what you're feeling in terms of your anger-based emotions and, and then look underneath the anger-based emotions into the fear. Yep. And both of you have actually had, in the last week, quite a few fear-based reactions which has been really good for you, actually. Yeah. Um, so uh, the key is to allow those to continue. Yeah. The, uh, uh, when you bodily experience your fear, you may even do things like vomit and all sorts of things, right? Yeah. So um, it gets pretty intense sometimes dealing with fear. And the key is to be prepared for that. So, so it's no good having a nice carpeted area in your home with, with no bucket there if you're going to deal with fear, right? Because <laughs> you will need your bucket at some point, I can guarantee you. Um, so in my case, I've found uh, I've gone through sort of feelings of often if I've had a huge amount of fear, uh, what will happen is I'll have this feeling, this feelings building up of block, blocked feelings, I'm blocked, I'm blocked, and many of you have that feeling, I'm blocked, I'm blocked, and then all of a sudden I'll have this breakthrough into the fear, and in one case I was really blocked up about uh, emotions about women and how damaging my relationships in the first century with uh, one woman, what, it wasn't really a relationship, it was just a friendship, but how the, that friendship was damaging to me quite a lot. And, and then um, once I worked my way, in terms of working my way through the fear, I finished up vomiting for two days before I actually got into the underlying grief. So that's how much resistance I had to the fear itself. And I can feel the emotions I'm dealing with now is probably going to end up in the same little um, process as well. So the key is just to allow these processes to occur in yourself. And uh, often we have a lot of uh, mechanisms to suppress and once we start getting through them, we really feel these deep agitations and feelings uh, inside of us and then there's an interaction that occurs with us bodily and often we do need to express those things physically as well and our body will react. So I've had very few releases of fear where my body hasn't reacted. So we need to be very, very uh, conscious that our body is probably going to react when we start dealing with our fear-based experiences. Um, now, for many of you, there's a fear in that, isn't there? Like being afraid of what the fear <laughs> is going to do when you experience it. And, um, and this gets back to that, uh, one of those beliefs that I wrote up on the board that I cannot cope with that. Many of us have this belief that I cannot cope with that. The truth is you can cope with this. You can cope with your emotional processing work. You can cope with any experience. You will be able to do it. Right? And part of uh, that though is to feel, the, the way to get to that point is to actually feel the opposite emotion, which is, I'm never going to be able to do this. You know, go into the fear that I'm not going to be able to cope. Actually feel the fear of not coping. 
and feel the fear that you, you're going to be overwhelmed and you don't know what you're going to do about that. Now, tomorrow you're going to have to be quite brave uh, to face some of the... Um, if I get the chance to show you some video snippets, you're going to be, need to be quite brave to look at some of them because uh, some of them are quite confronting. And so um, my suggestion is if you're still a bit worried about dealing with your fears and you're not sure whether you want to go ahead with that, then my suggestion is uh, you might want to avoid tomorrow. <laughs> not that I'm recommending you avoid your fears. <laughs> but uh, come tomorrow prepared, if you like, to get... Uh, to connect with some of these fears. Now, just to give you a bit of a rundown about tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be connecting with fears about a whole set of different issues, ranging from fears about world change events right the way through to war and, uh, and other emotions like that. Also, right the way through into religious fears as well, which many of you had from your childhood uh, that have been impressed upon you and not released. So, if you can allow these things to occur, and allow these fears to be triggered. And what I'll try to do tomorrow is give you as much ammunition as possible to actually face a lot of those fears. Can you bring a bucket for people? I can't bring a bucket for you. You have to bring your own buckets um, <laughs> if, you, if you're worried about your buckets. Uh, and the, the issues with regard to often bodily reactions is we're so afraid of body reactions we're often so concerned and afraid for them. And so the, the thing is to start allowing yourself to have your body reactions. Start allowing yourself to feel what your body feels. And that's a very, very important part of the process. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, my uh, person who was going to channel for me, I've triggered her fears, I know. And so she's off dealing with some of her fears about doing channeling in public. <laughs> So she, we won't be able to uh, deal with that just yet until she returns and, uh, and maybe then we won't be able to yet either. So what I'm trying to do now with all of my personal interactions with people is when I notice people have different fears and they're really willing to deal with them, I'm then triggering them quite frequently by asking them to do things that they might not normally do and things like that. Not things that are out of harmony with love but just to trigger the fears that are within them. And if a person's in the fear place, they'll actually go and deal with that fear first and then come out of that and then we can work together quite easily. So, so uh, that happens quite a lot around me. And uh, so not, you'll find a lot of these sessions are pretty ad hoc in the sense that I haven't organised them very much at all and that's the reason why. So what we'll do while we're waiting for my friend Monica to deal with those fears that she has is to... Uh, Start looking at some daily practical things, some more daily practical things you can do about your fear. So let's look at sort of like a daily practice, if you like. If you're in a state of fear and you know it, what things can you do day by day to help address your fear? Now, many of you know from other discussions that there's really a th couple of things happening with regard to fear. If we call this one the fear scale and this one the pain scale, so pain is up there and fear is up there. The opposite, opposite of pain, pain is obviously pleasure. Okay, so put pleasure down on this end of the scale. And the opposite to fear is actually love. Oh, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I don't think love has an opposite. But truth certainly does. Remember, if fear is false expectations appearing real, then what, the, what is the opposite to what is false? What is true? Yep. So, so obviously when you're in a state of truth, you're also in a state of love. Um, so that, that's a part and parcel of that. But let's have a look at what happens. Here might be the level of pain we have and here might be the level of fear we have. Now if that's the case, you will not deal with any of your pain. If your fear is greater or about your pain, then you won't deal with your pain. So we've got to get at some point to this stage where we're no longer afraid of the pain. Does that make sense? We're going to have some emotional pain. You've already got physical pain, but see, with physical pain, you know what we do most of the time? 
What we do firstly is we pop a few pills, you know, like headache tablets or body aches or whatever. That doesn't work a lot of times because it happens again and again and again. So what we do then is often the pain gets worse and by now we're looking at operations. Right? And we even deal with that, don't we? We even totally contemplate going in to have an operation to deal with a, something that's now degenerated in our body to the state where it's diseased. Why do we do that? Because we still accept the pain more than we do the fear about dealing with the emotion. That's why we do that, you see. So what we need to do is somehow lessen this fear. And we, so we need some daily practice, something that we can do in a day that helps us reduce the level of fear. Because what we want to do is I, we want to get the fear down below our pain level, if you like, below our threshold of, so that we will always deal with our pain. And eventually when we, you can see that there's two processes involved here. One is a willingness to experience all of my pain and the other is the willingness to start accepting emotionally truth. So what can we do pra daily practice wise that can address both of those issues? That's really what we want to look at. How do we start addressing the truth issue and how do we start addressing the pain issue? Right, so you've already seen a few of those things that you can do. Remember just before we were doing some diaphragmatic breathing. You're breathing into this area of your body. <sighs> right? So you're feeling into that area of your body. That is allowing yourself to, if you can do that as a daily practice. Now most of you, you work or uh, you've got, you know, you do things around home or it's not easy for you to just lay down and do that. My suggestion is to practice doing that five minutes a day no matter where you are at that particular moment. So you might be at work or you might be out partying or you might be home, you might be you know, doing some housework around the house, you might be out gardening, you might be doing all these different things. Just remember, do some breathe. You know, and really start breathing into your diaphragm. So, so breathing, breathe, breathe, breathe properly. Breath, breathe. You know. And the next thing is to start allowing yourself to feel the body's sensations. So practice feeling your body. Right? So feel your body. Be in your body. You need to stay in contact with your body. What we're doing a lot of times is trying to get out of our body because our body feels painful so we get out of our body. When you take a headache tablet, for example, you're trying to get out of your body. You're trying to avoid why you've got the headache. Does that make sense? Allow yourself instead, you know, even if you do it for five minutes before you take the headache tablet, even if you just do that, that's better. But what you do is you lay down or whatever or sit down and just allow yourself to feel that pounding feeling going on. And allow yourself just, uh, and you can even just ask yourself, what's this pounding feeling all about, you know? But you just allow yourself to feel it. Allow yourself to feel it longer each day if you have it. Right? Allow yourself to feel it. It's pounding again today. What's going on? Allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself to feel. And what will happen eventually is you'll break through into actually connecting with the underlying causal emotion if you, do, if you allow that to occur. So I often feel in pain still. And right at today, I've got terrible pain in my stomach today. Really bad pain in my stomach. And it's so painful for me today that I can, I'm finding it hard to stay up here and talk. That's how painful it is. But I'm just breathing, allowing myself to feel. I know what it's about. I'm allowed to feel this. I'm allowed to feel this underlying, this deep emotional grief about my own worthiness. And I need to allow myself to feel that, allow myself to feel that, allow myself to stay connected with this pain. If I stay connected with this pain, I'm going to eventually get to the underlying emotion. If I get out of this pain by using a technique, and some of the techniques are if I eat, or if I go off and do something else, or if I go out and party, or if I go, you know, while I've got this pain, I'm actually avoiding this pain now. So I need to reconnect with this pain, reconnect to my body, don't try to get away from it. Now sometimes when you do that, it feels unbearable. Many of you have felt that, have you? Where you started connecting to the pain and it just feels unbearable, right? And so what we need to do is when that happens, allow ourselves to stay connected with that pain and just cry about how unbearable it is. 
just allow those tears to flow about how unbearable it is. Does that make sense? And can we maybe whack on a air conditioner because it's a bit warmish in here now. Um, I showed, yep, thank you. Um, all right, so feel your body. What's next? What, what do we do next? Whatever emotions come up from that, we want to try to get into the emotion when it's happening. You see, most of the time what we're doing in our daily life is we're going along in our daily life and emotion gets triggered and we say, oh, I'll put that off to five o'clock tonight when I'm away from work. Or, do you know what I mean? We, we're automatically trying to shift it to another time. The problem with that is that we're actually adding another layer on top of the emotion of avoidance. Right? We need to allow ourselves to shift our emotions as they occur. Now, if an emotion is occurring, let it occur. Now, in the world that we live in today, this is a very difficult thing to practice, isn't it? Because you're going to get lots of judgment about that. You know? And if you're a woman, you'll get a different type of judgment than if you're a man. Because right? a lot of times a woman is allowed to do that in certain circumstances, whereas the man's not allowed to do that at all, oftentimes. So there's lots of different judgments that you'll get if you're a male and a female about those particular things going into your emotions. So allow the emotion immediately. And that is so hard to practice. So start practicing it with little things. Right? If you can do that with little things, you'll be able to grow and it will start growing inside of you where you'll be able to do that with all of your emotions. Now, of course, we're already drinking water, so that's part of our daily practice, and we're already eating so that we're not avoiding our emotions. That's another part of our daily practice. We discussed those before the break. Right? But there's a major daily practice that we need to, to do, and that is the, probably the most important one, I feel. Now, what's prayer? Prayer isn't this religious thing all right, that most people talk about. What it is is a longing directed towards your creator to assist you with whatever it is that you need assistance with. So what do we need assistance with? We need assistance to get into our fear-based emotions. That's what we need assistance with, right? So what we need to do is actually start longing to God that we, about dealing with these emotions. But we have to be longing in a state of purity. Right? It has to be a pure emotion. So if my pure emotion is, I would like to avoid my fear for the rest of my life, that's my emotion, I need to talk about that emotion with God. Does that make sense? So instead of saying to God, please help me to feel my fear-based emotions, what I need to be doing instead is saying to God, I want to avoid all of my fear-based emotions. Now, if me all my uh, fear... Need a, need a microphone if you're going to speak. Yep. <laughs> Maybe my prayer would be, give me all my fear. Yeah, but see, if I don't want all my fear, then that's not a prayer that's pure. Can you see that? No, I actually don't. No, and that's the one thing most people don't realise about their connection with God. You can't connect with God with an impure emotion. When I say an impure emotion, it has to be sincere. If your desire is to avoid your fear, then you need to say to God, I want to avoid my fear. You help me avoid all my fears. <laughs> you know, why don't you help me avoid all my fears? Get angry with God if you want to get angry. Why don't you help me, like, like I didn't create my fears. Other people created my fears. Why do I have to now feel my fears? So you allow yourself to actually connect with that emotionally. You see what I'm saying? Your avoidance, not the actual... See, a lot of times what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect to an emotion that we have no real desire to connect to at all. Right? How many of you really want to feel your fear? Really? Like, let's be honest. Like, there's not many of us in the audience who really want to feel their fear, right? The truth is, if you really wanted to feel your fear, what would already be happening? I'd be feeling my fear. Right, okay. So, so if I'm not already feeling my fear, then I don't want to. 
Right? So we can talk about this of fear all day and wanting to feel your fear, but if you really don't want to feel your fear, what's the best thing to do? To actually pray to God as a pure prayer. I don't want to feel my fear. Let yourself feel some of the anger that you have about that. Right? What do you feel about that? Like other people have created all your fear. It wasn't you created at all. It all seemed to be just a part of you by the time you were five, didn't it? Like how many, how many of you felt like you went out purposefully to create these fears inside of you? Like nobody, right? So, so you don't feel like it's your responsibility to feel these fears a lot of times. What we feel instead is, no, my mum should feel that fear and my dad should feel that fear and that little boy bully at school that beat me up every day should feel that fear. And Do you know what I mean? We have all of these feelings in us that it's not my responsibility to feel this fear. It's everyone else's responsibility. They're the ones who created it. And then we think, what about God? God created this terrible system where I've got to feel my fear after they created it? That's not fair. I don't think you're fair, actually. <laughs> right? This isn't a fair thing to do. What should happen is all of my fear that I have to feel, someone else should have to feel it. You know? And we start connecting with the real emotion we're feeling. Does that make sense? That's a prayer. Do you get the difference between what we're often doing and what we need to do with when it comes to prayer? Two opposite things, you see. Now, when I'm starting to do that, I'm now starting to get, firstly, to this anger I feel about the fear that, that's within me and how unjust it is to feel it and all these other things. And now what I'm doing is I'm releasing my blockages about feeling my fear because I'm experiencing them. I'm feeling the reasons why I don't want to feel my fear. Once I start connecting those, you'll see it happen very rapidly in you. You can connect that within two minutes later, you'll be in some fear <laughs> a lot of times because you've released the blockage to feeling the fear. And this also applies to your underlying emotions with fear. When you feel your fear and start experiencing it, a lot of times you'll get very rapidly to the emotion underneath that. Because it's when we state the truth of how we feel to God that we start connecting to ourselves emotionally. Not when we create a fictitious intellectual viewpoint inside of ourselves. It's very important to understand this, right? When I'm just saying to God, please help me feel my fear, when my emotion is, don't let me feel any fear, then I'm setting up like a lie, aren't I? I'm lying. I'm saying, please help me feel my fear. And God's going, what? You don't want to feel your fear. <laughs> like, you want to avoid all your fear. I'm not going to help you feel your fear. Like, your free will is saying to me, yeah, I want to avoid my fear. Can you see? How can God answer that prayer? To answer that prayer would be, uh, would be breaking free will. So I can be there saying, oh, please, please, God, help me do this, help me do that. And really be feeling totally the opposite emotion. And remember, it's the emotion I'm feeling that God is hearing. It's the emotion I'm feeling that God is hearing, not the words I'm saying. All right? Now that's very important to understand. We have a, um, I know someone's just writing down there, so we'll just, sorry, this is Mike, this is Mike over there. I know you're writing down there. When, when we can, um when we actually are feeling our fears, are, are they connected to a memory that we don't remember now, but, but at the time we're feeling the fear, the memory comes back? Oftentimes that will happen. As soon as you actually connect with the emotion itself, whatever the emotion is, most of the time the memories return. So you don't even have to worry about the memories really at this point. All, all you need to do is allow yourself to connect with the emotion that you feel. Right? So if my emotion I feel is a lot of anger and upset with God, like you've learned, many of you have been coming now for some time and learned about all these different ones of God's laws, right? There's a, this law of attraction thing. Well, how good's that? Like, you're basically saying with the law of attraction that when I feel, if I don't feel one of the emotions that somebody else created in me, let's face it, most of the time somebody else created in me, Basically what I'm telling you is that somebody else created this emotion in you and you're now responsible to feel it. And the law of attraction is going to bring you events to trigger that emotion until you feel it. How fair does that feel to you? Like for most people in the audience, I can guarantee you, once you really ponder about that, you'll feel that's not very fair. Right? 
You, you feel that it really, no, no, hang a sec. Why doesn't my mum's law of attraction bring that emotion to? <laughs> She's the one who created this one in me, right? Why doesn't she feel it? Do you see what I'm saying? And so we often have these feelings towards God about that. And so talk to God honestly. And that doesn't mean just talking sometimes. Sometimes you're going to get quite angry and frustrated with God and you're going to be angry and frustrated with this particular law or that particular principle. And you're going to be so upset about injustice. Because remember I've said in many occasions that love isn't justice. And you're going to be so upset about that. What? You know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. That's what you want in the end. <laughs> you know, I want the persons who created this to pay for what I, you know, what's within me now. And all of those kind of things. So allow... Allow the underlying fears to be present. When you start allowing the emotions, sure, the memories will return. But you don't need to worry about that at all. What all you need to worry about is just letting the feeling be present. When the feeling's present, that unlocks everything else. So, so when you're praying to God falsely that you really want to fear the, these, feel these fears... Yeah, and you don't but, really. But, but no, and you, and you don't really... But, you, but you're not aware of feeling any fear about not wanting to feel the fears, <laughs> if, if, if that makes sense. But, yep. yeah. Well, let, let's look at it. Let's look at what often we do with grief or all the emotions I've mentioned. Many of us are saying, please to God to help me get to my causal emotion. We know that if we release causal emotion, our law of attraction changes, right? We're going to be happier. So most of us feel like, oh, I really would like to connect with some of this causal emotion. So we try to connect with the causal emotion. But we don't really want to connect with the causal emotion most of the time. Because if we really wanted to, we already would be doing it right now, right? This is something we need to remember as a very basic thing. If I'm not right now connecting with the causal emotion, then I don't want to. And I need to be honest and say, I don't want to. I don't want to connect with this causal emotion. You know, the times that I've said I don't want to, sometimes within two minutes I've been feeling the causal emotion. It's amazing what it does. It's some kind of psychological thing. I, and I still don't really get it, really. But basically what it feels like is you're allowing yourself to feel that you don't want to do something. And that's more allowing than it is when you're trying to say I want to when you don't really. And, and to be frank with you, what's actually going on inside of you is it's the truth that will open you up. And I'm not just saying God's truth will open you up. What I'm saying is when you're truthful with God, it will open you up. Right? You try it even with your family. When you're truthful with your family, that's when emotions start coming out, right? It's when you're all trying to cover it over and make out and all that, no emotions come out then, right? But as soon as you're truthful with a family member, what happens? Oh, you start connecting with your sadness about that particular thing that you're talking about or your anger about it and so forth because you're being truthful, because you're in a dialogue. So what I'm suggesting is, have this dialogue with God. Initially, it's not going to be a very good dialogue. It's going to be like, you know, a lot of times it's going to be like angry dialogue towards God. Upset about this law and that law and why this has happened, why this has happened to me and all these different things. I don't want to deal with my emotions. Someone else should have to deal with it. They're to blame, I'm not to blame. All these different things are going to come out of you. They are your anger blocks in dealing with your relationship with God. Does that make sense? And then after that, you'll start getting into some fears. And you, so you can start discuss, discussing your fears. I don't want to have to go around doing this teaching work when I'm getting lots and lots of people criticising me all the time. I don't know about you, but criticism doesn't feel that good to me at the moment, right? So, so what happens a lot of times, I say I'm Jesus or I say, you know, I start talking about first century existence or something like that and I just get a barrage from an audience, right? A lot of times this happens. Now, I go home and I go, do I really want to be <laughs> doing this? Like putting myself in front of a couple of hundred people who, who half of the time or three quarters of the time, all they want to do is just spend, spend the time criticising me. Last week... I got quite a number of emails, as Mary will attest to, about all the things I did wrong last week <laughs> in the groups and whatever, right? And, and all the personal things when somebody came up and asked me a question, what I should have said to them and what I didn't say and how unloving I was and all these different things. And you'd be surprised how this happens on a weekly basis, part of my law of attraction at the moment, right? And so I need to feel my way through that law of attraction and allow those emotions to come up. And what comes up for me is emotions like, Wow, like I give my time for free 
and it's mostly women who do this. So, so I get a group of women coming up and criticising me about how lack of, I'm not gentle enough and I'm not understanding enough and I'm not kind enough and I'm not enough and I said some things that they didn't like and, you know, and, I, and I get this list of things emailed back to me. Generally it's a quite, quite good because it's a pointed list, you know, dot pointed <laughs> list, very, very clear. <laughs> and, uh, and it's amazing how many times that happens. And, I, and so I, then I go into these emotions which I still need to clear. Why do I want to do this? Like, like, I don't want to be Jesus. Who wants to be Jesus? Do you want to be Jesus instead? I, I'll let you be one. Like, and that's fine. You know, I'll just go into insignificance. But I love the truth. I love the divine truth. And this is my problem, you see. I love the divine truth more than I like being hammered on the weekend. <laughs> sort of thing. So, so a lot of the times what happens now is that I, I'm in my passion speaking the divine truth. I get hammered in return back. And so what I do then is I allow myself to go into the emotion and I even talk about that with God. Like, what do you expect from me? You know, like, like I want some help here. Like, you know, I want some help here in the sense of like, uh, all I want is to be able to present the divine truth and not get hammered every time doing it. Right? And so I feel about those emotions. And I know many of you don't do that, right? Uh, hammer me, I mean. Um, so I know many of you feel very appreciative. But see, with my emotional injury that I have at the moment, I don't feel that as much as I feel the times I get hammered, right? And this is what happens is we do, until we do with these emotional injuries, the ones that are detriggering ones are the ones that are exposed within us. So I have to work my way through that emotion, feel those emotions. And some of the emotions that come up are like a fear of being attacked. Right? So that's a big emotion still for both myself and Mary. A fear, a fear of being physically, violently harmed in, in putting ourselves out there. One of the emails I got this week was a pretty violent uh, email about how um, I'm causing major delusion. I'm delusioned, totally myself, of course. And then, um, and of course, Mary is taking this particular email. And, and then all of these different things about um, all of this untruth that I'm teaching and that woe will be on me and God will punish me and God will all of these things, like just lots and lots of stuff about their own anger, really. So we often get these kind of criticisms back, of course, because we're open with our email address and we're open with all these things. You just get your law of attraction kicking in. And what I do is allow myself to feel the fear of that. Like, what does that feel like? It, feel, it feels terrible sometimes. And I allow myself to feel. And each time I allow myself to feel, I release a bit of that. And then the next time, it affects me far less. So that's how, like, years ago when I started doing this, like, you know, I'd get up in a group of 20 or 30, you know, three quarters would walk out in part of the way through the discussion generally with anger and rage, and then uh, the rest would be actually listening for a while, but eventually they too would get into anger and rage about something I've said, and many of you in the future will, by the way, get into anger and rage about something I've said. And, and I feel that rage and I feel that anger. And before what I would do is I'd go into this fear about people's anger, like start to tremble and feel shaky inside and feel really terrible inside. And, and so I'd be really worried, you know, about all of their anger and, and, the, and the, I'd have a terror-based response, in other words, to their anger that I'd have to allow myself to feel. Let myself feel it, the next time it goes, you know, it gets better. And I described last weekend how... I've had some pretty major, pe you know, people ringing up, s threatening me to kill me and all sorts of things and I've had to work my way through those emotions in terms of what, what that causes or triggers within me with regard to my fears. So the key is to allow your law of attraction, and that's the next thing I'd like to write down, is to allow your law of attraction to trigger your fear. So, so notice, notice your law of attraction. I don't like using acronyms. Law of attraction, that stands for. Notice your law of attraction. So, this week I had one man, um, a male. It's very important what gender too, right, uh, is doing this with you. So this week I had one male man who is a religious zealot email me with lots of condemnatory stuff, right? And so, so I've got to look at that as a law of attraction thing. What's the law of attraction thing there? And, and that one man emailed both Mary and myself separately. So 
both Mary and myself has a law of attraction with that particular one. And then I had one lady emailing me specifically, addressing me specifically, saying different things about how I was unkind and ge not gentle and all these different things. And basically, the word she used quite often was uncool. I'm uncool. I'm uncool. So, so there was a, you know, that's my law of attraction. That was a female sending me that, e that email. So, oh, a poet and I don't know. And uh, none of you caught that one. Um, <laughs> So I had a female sending me the email and, uh, <laughs> and, that, and that is a very important part of my law of attraction in that particular event. Does that make sense? And so I've got to look at that. Then during the week uh, we had a number of spirit based events occur, myself and Mary together, where different spirits came to talk and different spirits came to express themselves and they had different emotions and so forth. And so that's part of our law of attraction, to allow ourselves to feel about that, what fears were involved in that. And uh, the key is to work through those particular fears as well. Does that make sense? Your law of attraction tells you everything that's going on pretty much. Mary, you want to... I'll just turn on this way. Yeah. I just, sorry, I just wanted to add for the lady who asked the question about prayer, um, that sometimes I just pray to God to show me about this issue and, and usually the answer comes in my law of attraction but if I pray about it, it seems to really heighten the experience. It seems to yeah. ramp up the law so of attraction. So even if I think, oh, I don't really know what's going on with me around this issue but can you show me what, what is really happening for me emotionally? Yeah. Because sometimes I feel really far removed from the issue. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot you can do with prayer, lots you can do with prayer. And my suggestion with prayer is to notice when you pray, you can ramp up your own law of attraction. The problem with fear is we often don't want to. What we want to do most of the time is to, to suppress our fears, you see. And so we're trying to suppress our law of attraction about fear. I have quite often people coming up, but you're saying if I ramp up my law of attraction about fear, I'm afraid of dying in a car crash. So what do I do with that? <laughs> like if I ramp up my law of attraction, does that mean I'm going to have a car accident next week? And the answer is, well, yeah, you are afraid about a car accident every single day of your life, aren't you? So feel the fear. When you feel the fear of that, it will actually lessen the law of attraction about the issue, not the opposite way around, right? See, a lot of times what we do is we think it's going to increase the law of attraction about the issue when we tune into the emotion. Because we're taught New Age teachings again, you either go down the track of saying, you know, what you've got to do is use your mind and you zen out of that and you do... And it doesn't change your law of attraction at all. I was talking with Josh uh, last week when he was around and at our place and uh, he was saying how you went into that beautiful zen state, how you felt really zened out and blissed and yet law of attraction still, computer broke down and car, car broke down and whatever it was else that broke down, they all still happened and it's still happening. But, but because of the the feeling like of meditating out of it, you get out of that law of attraction. The truth is the law of attraction is happening. If it's happening, you haven't dealt with it yet. Right? And, uh, and that's a, just a very basic truth. So if you haven't dealt with it yet, let yourself feel. All right, law of attraction has brought me this week two more criticisms, pretty intense criticism from one guy, violent sort of criticism. I've got to look at that. I've got to look at what's inside of me, what emotion inside of me is that triggering. Let myself feel that. Ben? Did you reply to the emails? No. Mm. So I you just try, leave it? Yeah, what I try to do myself is not project back at the person. Right? So there are times when I've dealt with the emotion that I will then reply to the email. But the majority of the times what I will do myself is just feel the emotion until it's done. And I'll just reread the email. I print them out. And re so, you know how people say, don't ever read your own hate mail? Well, I, I read all of my hate mail, right? So what I do is print it out. Mary's seen me do this quite often. Print it out and I reread it, you know, go off and deal with it, reread it again and see. And in the end, once I can read it and I've now dealt with the emotion, you can feel that within yourself where you feel in a space of love with the person. Now, if I want to, I address the issue with the person, whatever that issue might be. A lot of times by then, though, They've emailed me back saying sorry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, that often happens as a result of you working through your emotion and getting into a place of forgiveness where the person basically works through theirs as well. 
So that's often happened. But if that hasn't happened, then, uh, and I feel there is some issues to address in truth, then I'll, then I'll address those issues. Yeah. And I suggest to do, for you to do that as well. Try, try to avoid this reprojection of stuff back at the person, because what you end up with is just a tennis match. You know, one of those tennis matches where you go, hit, the other one, you know, hit, and you know, it's like, <laughs> hit, you know, and, and you know the ones that sometimes like, oh, that was a good rally, but it just lasts 25 minutes and it seemed a bit boring to watch, right? And that's what happens to our life a lot. We, we finish up entering into these, into these transactions that all they are is hitting the emotion back and forward but not actually feeling the emotion. So stay in the transaction emotionally and feel the emotion. When you stay in the transaction emotionally and feel the emotion, you will notice changes in the dialogue if you enter into a dialogue after that. You will notice changes where one of you shifts and the other one starts to shift and so forth. And eventually you get to a point... And in some cases we've had points where you know, we've had dialogues for 10 or 15 times after I've dealt with the emotion. And then in the end we said, well, that's enough now. Basically, this person is still projecting anger and hatred and whatever else, and it's time for us to stop and, and say that's enough. You know? And you'll feel that time inside of yourself when you're starting to be unloving towards yourself. But you won't avoid emotionally what's going on. So that's why... Um, I find it's good to read all the hate mail and deal with all of that emotionally. Yeah. And in the process of that, obviously um, things change. And your law of attraction changes, events change, different things get attracted to and you notice your attractions changing and you can see, wow, I've dealt with that. You know, I've really dealt with that particular issue now. So now when I'm in a group like this and I get projected at me lots of anger and hatred, my back, I used to get terrible back pain so bad that I couldn't sit down after the group. And so what I'd have to do is sort of bend over and sort of like in a fetal position bending over and just cry until the back pain was released. And, and that was all just unworthy feelings coming from that anger and rage and so forth. So I just allow myself to do that and then feel like going off next weekend and <laughs> doing another talk and triggering, triggering the same thing. And then you get to a point where, wow, that, that's not there anymore. And even though I've got maybe some anger or other projections coming, I still don't feel that anymore. And you know then that well, everything's been released. Yeah. All right, let's get uh, back to our daily stuff. Everyone's okay with that so far? Okay. What I suggest you do too is buy a journal. So if you haven't bought a journal already, my suggestion is buy one. And in the journal, have a page, and you might eventually need two or three pages with this particular one, but in a journal, have a page that you go to, and whenever you're angry, you write down what the event was about. Whenever you were slightly annoyed, you write down what the event was about. Whenever you were irritated, you write down what the event was about. Does that make sense? So what that basically I would call is an anger list. But, but you don't have to do it all at once, like, you can just you know, write down what you're angry about, what you can remember, but then add, let it change. It will, it will change with you, right, as you're changing. Allow yourself to note down the things you're angry. So this week, what was I angry about? Um, I was angry about, I can't remember what I was angry about this week because I was mostly sad this week. <laughs> um, what about the previous week? Oh, I, was, I was a bit upset about the, uh, the woman who emailed me those things, did I? So... That was slight annoyance, I'd call that. So write that on my anger list. Slight annoyance, woman sending nasty email, you know, whatever that's about. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Write that on the list. You don't have to deal with it at this point. You just write it on the list. Because sometimes, you, you know, you're not feeling the emotion of it, right? But it happened. The event happened. So write down the event, what happened. So write down that. And what did I feel from that event? A bit of, you know, annoyance or whatever. Write down that too. But couldn't get into anything, just, you know, so another thing happens and another thing happens. And if, if you write them all down, the things that made you angry, then once a week, look at that list. So you look at the list for the last week. Does that make sense? And look at that list and now use your mind, because at the moment it's pointless using our emotions at this point because we're disconnected from our fear and we're disconnected from our grief and so forth. So instead... Use your mind, because that's the tool available to us in this state. Use our mind to make a fear list from the anger list. Do you follow me? So we do a fear list. 
from the anger list. So like I was, I, so this I was slightly annoyed about this lady. What's my fear? So I have to think about it. Just just allow yourself to pray about it. Let and let some intuition come. Cause this is where your spirit guides can help you a lot as well. And just write down what you th suspect it might be about. It doesn't have to be right at this point because what we're trying to do is open our awareness. That's what we're trying to do. Can you see that? We're trying to stretch ourselves and open our awareness. So open your awareness into the fears that you, that you have and start writing down. Relate your anger to your fear, in other words. Join the dots together. That anger is actually oh, about that fear. Ah. Right? Oh, that anger that I had there was about me being afraid of that. Like, so, so for example, I might be angry that you rang up the plumber today and he didn't come today. Your first thought might be to ring up the plumber again and give him an earful. You promised you were coming today. Why didn't you come today? So instead of doing that, you're upset, right? So write down, what were you afraid of there? What are you afraid of? Could be all sorts of things, couldn't it? Could be, could be the toilet's not working and now you're starting to have a number two generate, right? <laughs> and, and you're afraid about going outside. It could be just a fear of comfort. Do you see what I'm saying? A fear of discomfort could be just the thing driving you. Foul Sorry? A foul bow. A foul bow. <laughs> You're a poet and you don't know it either, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary, what do you want to say, David? You might as well have this microphone if you're going to say things on a regular basis. <laughs> I was just going to say that sometimes it's not a fear for me, it's not a fear directly related um, to the like event. For me the plumber not coming would be a fear about me, like I'm afraid of feeling unloved. Yes. So it's not a fear about the plumber, it's a fear about the emotion that the plumber is triggering. Yeah, often there's no seeming relationship between the two. When I say no seeming relationship, there is always a reason why you go into anger and it's always fear-based generally, right? But often when we first look at it, there is often no relationship between the two. And so what we've got to do is trust some intuition here. What's this about? What, is, what am I feeling about? So, so I remember, and Monica, do you mind me saying something about when you were with us? All right. So Monica stayed with us for a few days out at the eco tent and, and she came up one morning and I said to Monica the night before, I don't want you to use candles in the tent. Right. Uh, what would you feel about that? <laughs> well, Jam's okay, but who, uh, you see it de depends on what emotion is in you, what you'd feel about that. Monica had a man who's telling her about free will, controlling her free will. That's what she'd thought. Right? And so you went into the emotion about being angry with AJ, hypocritical AJ, doing his stuff. Like, so we're in the anger state here, right? So this is the anger. When we started dealing with the fear, when we linked the next morning, Monica was truthful with me. She said, I'm angry with you. I said, okay, why are you angry? Because you told me I can't light a candle when I've got free will. I'm allowed to do anything I want. And for a start, that's not what free will is. That's a false belief about free will, by the way. Because the, the belief that God, the truth is about free will is you're allowed to do anything you want, but there is a consequence to every action you do. Right? That's the second half that we usually ignore, right? We chuck that one away. We say we're just allowed to do whatever we want, right? But anyway, so she comes up and says, oh, yeah, you didn't allow my free will. I said, yes, I did, actually. You had the free will to stay in my cabin under the terms I've given you, or you had the free will to go home. So that's free will. I've given you free will. No, 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 no. We had this discussion, didn't we, Monica? No, no, that's not true. That's not true. You, you know, you're just trying to get away from the fact now that you're trying to control me. And rah, rah, rah. Anyway, I said, Monica, this is not what it's about at all. Let's delve into the fear of what it's about. And in the end, it was whenever... Monica felt a man didn't give her what she wanted, the man didn't love her. And this was related to dad, right? Father feeling unloved from dad. 
and whenever Dad didn't give her what she wanted, then it meant Dad didn't love her. Now, as soon as Monica said that, bang, she was in the causal emotion. Weren't you? Like a few seconds, four hours of tears afterwards, wasn't it? And so what happens a lot of times is we can get through these layers quite readily and quickly as long as we're speaking the truth of them. So if Monica had come up and said, oh, I said, how are you last night? Oh, it was fine, you know. And uh, what do you feel today? Oh, I'm okay. Now, we would have never got to talk about how angry she was with me for a start, would we? Right? And so we're not in a state of truth now, are we? So can the emotion flow? No. The emotion will not flow while you're in a state of untruth. The only emotions that flow in a state of untruth are self-deception anyway. Right? So she gets into the emotion, the anger, and now we're stepping down. Now we're starting to step down, right? through the layers. If you avoid all of that, you're not stepping down through any layer. So you're never going to get to the basic emotion in the end. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Okay. By the way, when I say the words, does that make sense, it often means that I feel that quite a number of you are not making sense of that. But anyway. <laughs> all right. So do your anger list, do a fear list. Fear list, very handy. Relate it to your anger list. Right? And then the next step is to choose one of those fears and, for the, the, and what, what I suggest to you is choose the biggest one. Now what we often do is choose the smallest one. Right? And if you, can, if you want to do that, you can do that. But to be honest with you, the biggest fear is going to have the biggest result when you release it. Right? Makes sense. So what we do is choose one of those fears and we focus our prayer and attention on that fear. Now I don't mean we go, please help me feel this fear next week. That's not focusing our attention on a fear. That's not being truthful necessarily. What I need to do, all right, I need to be honest with this fear for a start. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel this. You know, we talk to God about what we don't want to feel. Why don't you want to feel it? Talk to God about why you don't want to feel it. What's going on inside of you that causes you to not want to feel that fear? Why are you avoiding this fear? Oh, because it could be any reason, couldn't it? It could be hundreds of different reasons. I'm afraid I'll die if I feel that. It wasn't my fault in the first place that I had this. You know, and we can go off a long list, say all the things you feel, say them all. And then focus on triggering that fear during the week. So set your intention to address the fear. I don't mean to connect with it necessarily. I mean to be honest about it all week. Focus your intention on being honest about it for the entire week. That fear. So somebody comes up to say, how are you going today? Oh, I've just realised this week that I've got a really big fear. <laughs> and just say what it is. And then, you know, you come home from work and the husband asks, how are you doing? Uh, well, I've just noticed my fear come up quite a few times today. Right? Talk about the fear. Talk about what it is. Talk about, you know, allow yourself to stay connected with it during the week. All right? So what you do then is you go to the movie, on a, you know, to one of the movie places on a Tuesday. Usually that's the cheap movie night, right? And so <laughs> what you do is you borrow out your five videos about that fear. Right? And that becomes your focus for the rest of the week. So, so one of the nights you sit down... <laughs> And you breathe, you know, you're breathing, breathing diaphragmatic because now you're going to watch the Emily Rose movie or something and fear about spirits or whatever it is that you're connecting with, you see. So if I'm afraid about being alone, I'll go and watch a movie that's about being alone. You know, if I'm afraid of earth change events, I'll go and get a movie about earth change events. If I'm afraid of violence, I'll go and hire five violent movies. Right? If I'm afraid of rape, i go and hire some movies with rape portrayed in them. Right? And what I do is I connect to the fear of this. Now, many of you are going to feel like AJ's just crazy now, like he's suggesting some things that are way out of line now, right? And I can feel those projections, so, you know. And so, but I'm saying to you that this is how you get under your fears. There's some grief and other emotions in here for you. And if you allow yourself to actually do this, you'll find yourself getting into those underlying emotions. Right. Now you'll be amazed sometimes
that what type of movies you choose. I don't, and sometimes, if you, like with a violent movie, if you're afraid of violence, sometimes you can choose gentle movies and they trigger you. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's the flip side that actually triggers you. So, so use some intuition when you're at the video store, you know? Or use some intuition about what other people have told you this week are good movies to watch or good books to read. So somebody comes up and says, oh, you know, there's this book called, uh, you know, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, Dr. Susan, Susan Jeff Jeffers. You go, oh, I'm not afraid, don't need to watch it, look at that book. Now there's your law of attraction just happened there, right? Your law of attraction just happened. Go and get that book. If you, if you can't uh, like get it from the library, go and buy it. And then read it. That's your law of attraction. Somebody's brought that to you. So quite often, I've looked at the title and book gone, ugh. I don't know why, they, why this is my law of attraction. Open it up, start reading, and wow, it's triggering all sorts of things. Not what the person thought. You know, most of the time it's nothing to do with what the person thought who was giving me the book. But often it's totally different things being triggered. But there's my law of attraction. Right? Same goes with the movies. So tomorrow what we're going to do is spend a bit more time on that. Give you some movies, books, whatever. And just again, use your law of attraction. One way I do that sometimes and uh, that you might, might work for you is just read the title out to yourself and just breathe a little and see which titles make, you, make your body change. So if you feel a bit teary reading a title, get that title. If you feel a bit anxious reading a title, you get that title. Does that make sense? And just go through the list. You know, feel a bit you know, scared about that title, get that title. You know? And just go through the list like that. Get four or five... Um, if that's what you've got the time to do, one if you haven't. And allow yourself to focus your intention on looking at this particular fear, seeing it for what it is. Right? Not avoiding it, seeing it for what it is. I'm not saying that you'll want to deal with it because to be honest, if you're not already dealing with it, you probably don't want to deal with it. So start talking to God about you not wanting to deal with it. Talk to others about how you don't want to deal with it. You know, but be honest about it. You see, it's the truth that sets everything free. Everything, including all of your emotions, get set free by the truth. And so you're not going to get anywhere saying, oh, please help me feel this particular emotion, when in reality you do not wish to do it. Do the opposite of that. I don't want to feel this emotion. So be honest about that. Don't just shut up but be open about how you really feel inside of yourself, even with God. Remember, this path is about connecting with God, right? This means telling God everything you feel, not just the good things, you know. We're taught from a very young age in religious movements, you, go, you know, only talk to God about the good things because otherwise God will punish you if you talk about the bad things, right? Often we feel that. That's not how it is. God wants to know everything. God already knows everything about you. Often in your speaking it, now you know it when you start speaking it, you see. Often God's there looking down and you're saying, hmm, not praying about that particular thing, but that's not what's happening with the law of attraction right now. It's interesting that, right? <laughs> if you can imagine yourself being in that position, like looking down at everyone in humanity going, oh, look at that law, that law, law of attraction working there, 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 there. You imagine in one day on your own life, like there's literally hundreds of events where God's going, yeah, see there, there's again, another law of attraction, skip over, another law of attraction, skip over, look at that going on there. And then the person says, oh, I want to know about it. Oh, God's like, God's in action then, right? <laughs> One person wants to know about their law of attraction and what's going on. And trust me, this is how God feels. God feels so enthused when one person just wants to, wants to connect with their true law of attraction, Right? And, and they want to know about it. Of course God's going to do all sorts of things to help you know about that. Now, the trouble is I can't talk to the person as they are because they've got so much resistance towards me, but I can talk to Joe Bloggs over here and I can get this, uh, this spirit, who you call an angel over here, to help them out there and I can get their guide here to help them out and their wife's actually quite a bit mediumistic too. I might be able to just manoeuvre that a little and this is how, like... God knows, of course, what he can and can't do. And so he does it just to help you connect with yourself. If you can think of God like that up there, it will help you a lot. God feels very personable towards you. And God's always interested in your 
underlying emotional state and God's always wanting you to actually work through the underlying causal emotion. And God, the saying is, will move heaven and earth. Well, maybe not quite that because that would be breaking other laws. But God will do quite a few things from a spiritual and emotional and physical perspective in order for you to have that emotion triggered in you when you really want it. Right? So start talking to God like that, like a friend. Like, and I'm not saying like your current friends because a lot of your current friends, you say, you know, they say you come, they come up to you and say, "How are you?" and you go, oh, "I'm okay." Yeah, I can't tell them how I really feel because how I really feel is a bit about them actually, <laughs> and they'll get upset, you know, when I tell them that. No, no, I won't say that, right? And so, but with God, it's different because God already knows how you feel, and we've got to get used to talking to God about how we feel, understanding that. When we understand that, we start connecting with our emotion. When we connect to our emotion things flow. That's a very important thing to understand. So, anger list, fear list, and then the next step was to actually do one of the fears, right? So, when we say do it, we focus, focus on one fear. Now, my suggestion is to focus on the fear that your law of attraction is already bringing you. That's the easiest thing to do. If we go up the back there with the mic. Uh, would you say a genetic disease um, is also law of attraction? I'm, I'm having a, my grandmother had it and my mother and it just hit me five years ago. And yep. Yeah. All, every event, every disease, every single thing that ever happens to you in the course of a day is all the result of a law of attraction. Now, the key is to take away blame. Right? Because most of the time when I say that, then people go, oh, so I'm to blame. No, most of the time there's this multi-generational error to blame. Right? But the truth is it's now inside of yourself. And the truth is also that any genetic problem can be repaired with God's love. So, so if we look at those two truths and we see that, all right, all that's stopping the repairing of this problem is my own resistance. So there's something going on inside of me emotionally that causes it. Now, where that emotion comes from does not matter. What matters is me connecting to it and releasing it. So this is where you get away from judging yourself about the emotion and start getting into just saying, I'm allowed to feel my emotions. Because to be honest, most of the time, our emotion never came from our own life. Now, our emotion, can, the, the diseases that we get and so forth can often come from spirit attachments and other sources, but all of that is still based upon emotional attraction. So spirit attachment can also release through yes. feeling this? Or could I talk there? I mean, some, I have tried a lot. But the right. only way to release a spirit attachment is by dealing with your emotions. Right? Because what happens often the time is we, we can talk to a group of spirits who are attached to a certain emotion in us, that group of spirits moves off, and all that happens is another group of spirits move in who have the same emotion. <laughs> and this is why many people who are mediumistic in the audience have this constant cycle of, a, of certain type of spirits coming in all the time. And that's because of our emotions. But if we raise our emotions and we deal with the emotions, experience them and release them, then the same law of attraction no longer occurs. And when people come to visit us from a spirit world, we also are not affected in the same way by their visits. So, so it's a bit like